uh, in the world of small business, in the world of business, uh, in your family, uh, about this crazy time that we're in. Uh, I think we're going to be in the new normal with this coronavirus. Uh, I, I also know that uh, because I've been in this small business space full time for 25 years working from home, mostly in my pajamas, um, that uh, it is an opportunity for us to uh, review, perhaps reinvent ourselves and to seek counsel where we're not sure. Now, if you have a traditional brick and mortar business, which I have a lot of friends who do, there are also some concerns. So uh, I've invited uh, my special guest. Her name is Babs Jameson. Uh, she is a UK and a USA qualified uh, lawyer specializing in commercial contracts and legal services for small business owners. Uh, so my guess that's probably you. Babs has helped uh, a lot of small business owners uh, from online businesses to event companies to software companies get their legal affairs in order. And I know if you have a traditional business and you've been pretty much forced to close your doors for a while for safety reasons for your family and your clients families, you know, some of these issues are going to be spinning around in your mind. And um, I asked Babs to jump on a call here with us today just to kind of uh, address some insights in terms of what your options are, um, how do we minimize any risks that you have, and how do we protect your family. So Babs, thanks so much for being here today. No, well, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's it's a, it's an interesting time for sure. So share a little bit more about with our viewers uh, about your background and how you got into this profession and uh, what you're seeing. Sure. So um, I have worked a variety of different roles as a lawyer in the time of my career. I have worked private practice. I've worked in-house um, for a kind of medium-sized company. And for the last two years, I've had my own practice. Um, and I have been advising mainly small to medium businesses on a whole range of different commercial matters, whether it's contractor agreements, client agreements, employment law, anything that small to medium-sized businesses are kind of having to deal with on a daily basis. And the ethos of my work is to make businesses feel as if they have in-house counsel available and on demand, but it doesn't cost them their entire year's budget. You know, I understand that small businesses are, are trying to be cost conscious and they can't always afford that, but they still have to comply with, with the law and the regulation like everyone else does. So that has been the kind of direction that my business has been going in and it's been going very well. Um, what we have seen, obviously, in the last couple of weeks is a lot of panic um, in the small business community. Businesses are worried whether they are kind of traditional brick and mortar businesses and even online businesses. I am receiving a lot of queries, a lot of panicked messages. And I just really want to, to kind of jump on here and make sure that, that small business owners know that, first of all, they're not alone in this. And secondly, that they do have options and that there are there are ways that they can tackle this and even prosper during a time like this. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about the the impact on small businesses and, and what steps, practical steps that a small business owner should do uh, right now. So in terms of how um, COVID-19 is going to be impacting businesses, obviously we've seen a lull kind of in the last few days. And that that's particularly over in the UK and Ireland. Um, every country is being hit at a slightly different time. And, and so what businesses might be experiencing at the moment, depending on where they're based, is a, a bit of a bit of mild panic um, mm. because it seems a bit like we're in a holiday season. And that can be quite unnerving. Um, so the first thing I would say about that is please don't panic. Please realize that things will start to bounce back in a couple of days, maybe not to the same extent um, as we've been used to, but people will try and get back to normal um, as much as they can shortly. In terms of the longer term effects, obviously we need to then start looking at the different ways that businesses need to be protecting themselves. Things like there will be a lot of employment issues that, that businesses are having to deal with, whether their staff are on sick leave or need to take time off to care for their loved ones or whether they've been isolated depending on what country you're in um, businesses are going to need to be able to cater for that and they'll need to work out whether they should be paying these staff or laying staff off and, and that is going to be a tricky decision for businesses 
Another thing they'll obviously have to deal with is the fact that the footfall for businesses and the kind of customer demands are significantly lower for the foreseeable future. And what I would suggest in that respect is that businesses really take a look at their at their finances, what's going in, coming in and what's going out on a kind of monthly, weekly basis, see how they can be economical with what they are having to pay out, but obviously not also not using this time to kind of really drastically cut their marketing budget. I also see this as a time where businesses can actually grow and prosper. And if they can take the opportunity to see where there are maybe elements for growth that they have ignored before, or if there's an area where they can really expand their business online, now would be the time to do so. Yeah, let, let's talk a little bit more about those opportunities in terms of growth. Um, there's a million different brick and mortar businesses out there, small business owners. And I think most countries um, are built on the backs of small business owners. Mm -hmm. um, any ideas or any suggestions uh, for growth opportunities to um, move forward for a small business owner in these times? Yeah, so first of all, and, and this might not be seen as a growth opportunity, but I definitely see it as one. And that is that small businesses really should be tapping into whatever government and state aid is being provided. OK, so whether that is access to funding from the government or rent holidays, that kind of thing, that's actually a really, really good thing for companies to be taking advantage of because any money that they do have can be really plowed into additional marketing or maybe growing their business to more online a more online space that kind of thing um, in terms of beyond what the state and what governments are able to provide businesses there are definitely opportunities for growth in almost all businesses and um, obviously businesses like restaurants and bars are going to struggle a little bit more but i've already seen businesses like that making real headway in their communities taking advantage of rent holidays for a couple of months and keeping staff on with the help of government aid and then helping to service the sick people or the isolated people within the communities. And while that might not reap massive rewards at the moment, that's going to be something that's remembered by customers and in the communities yeah. going forward. In terms of businesses that can be moved online, I would really encourage small business owners to look at that as an option now if you've not already done so. And if you have a small online presence, really use this time to grow that and scale that up. This is the time where people are going to be panicking and they're going to be reducing their marketing costs. I would really be encouraging people to consider whether it might actually be the right time for them to put more into marketing. Remember, people will be sat at home scrolling on Facebook, watching YouTube. This is actually a really good opportunity to get people's attention on things like social media. Yeah, you know, um, you know, we're on Facebook now. It's like a couple of billion people on Facebook. Uh, I, I encourage uh, uh, people always, from a marketing standpoint, to build an audience or build their tribe. And I don't care whether you're talking about a dentist or a, a Pilates instructor. Um, mm -hmm. You have your 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 consistent clients, and I think the key is to always stay top of mind. Um, mm -hmm. And that doesn't necessarily mean uh, a financial exchange for goods and services, but it's adding value. So Facebook yeah. is free. Any business owner can create a Facebook group for free. They probably have a list of clientele. They have a core list and then it becomes the creative part really becomes how does that business owner now add value to those individuals that have been, you know, doing business with them for, you know, weeks, months, years, or even decades, because there is, is a following. Yeah. And I think what you said there is really, really important is that is people are going to remember the people who step up uh, yeah. in this hard time. And the truth is, I believe, um, I believe it's going to get worse before it gets better, but mm -hmm. I believe that's where character will be revealed. Uh, and I believe there's an opportunity for us to step up and to be the leaders that we need to be in the small business space. Uh, and, you know, maybe doing things that have nothing to do with our business. You know, I am uh, addicted to personal development myself. So I love becoming a better version of myself, but yeah. just offering things like that to people that have nothing necessarily to do with the business at hand, but to say, okay, we're in this together as people, as a community. And I think that's kind of the thing that 
uh, every small business owner can do immediately without a whole lot of effort and energy. 100%. I mean, I know um, gyms around about where I am just now who are, you know, they, they run classes for children and, and a lot of time for disabled children. And obviously, they, they've had to shut their doors. And what they're running now every night is a live stream, a live stream workout. And all the kids can be getting involved and parents are getting involved. And what we're finding during this time is that communities are really coming together. And as exactly as you said, that will be remembered in the months to come. Yeah. So as we, as we wrap this up, uh, and I really appreciate your time, what action steps uh, should a small business owner take right now um, to mit mitigate any effects um, that might come into play with the virus and the shutting down of so much stuff? First of all, definitely look into, as I mentioned, your government or state aid, what options are available to you, because those will be will, those will come in really, really handy um, and, and they will help you along the way. Second of all, definitely have a look at things like your client contracts, your supplier contracts, that kind of thing. You might be able to get out of these agreements. You might be locked in and you kind of you, it's important that you understand and appreciate the situation that you're in because you may have to leave some money aside to deal with those situations. I would also have a look at what your employment policies say if you have a few employees, what your employment contracts say. Um, and get get communication out to your staff if you haven't done so already. Make sure that your staff understand what you're doing and how you're trying to support them as best you can. And similar with your customers, there will be a lot of customers, depending on your type of business, who are panicking and will be on the phone to you. If you can get announcements out, if you can reassure them that you're doing all you can, that would be advisable. I would definitely make sure as well that whatever efforts you're taking in the community, um, or, or however you're planning to help your customers in a different way from how you've been used to so far, publicize that, get that on your social media, make sure that people are connecting with you and are seeing the good work that you're doing because it's all going to help your reputation and it's going to help mitigate the effects of this in the long term. Yeah, you know, one of the things um, we haven't talked about, but um, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mess, uh, 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 just talk about this message. And that is the fact there's a lot of people who are going to be watching this who aren't small business owners. They're employees. Mm -hmm. um, would now be a good time to start a, a small business, a home-based business. Uh, any insight uh, from your perspective there? I actually think this is a brilliant time for growth. Um, it, it really is, in my opinion, always the best time in business to act when other people are scared. Um, and that is because other businesses start to slow down. They start to be a little bit nervous about their costs. If you are lucky enough to be in a situation where you have some funding behind you and you've potentially been sent home from work and you don't have anything else to do or you just have some time on your hands, I really would I would suggest that this is a great time and it's it's a brilliant time to embrace the way that our changing economy and marketplace is going to look for the next few months. Remember, if you're starting a business right now, you're coming at this from a completely different perspective than current business owners. Current business owners have ongoing liabilities. They have things that they need to, to worry about and think about. You're starting from scratch. So you can create and take advantage of a situation where your costs are low and you can potentially start making a profit very early on just because of the situation that we're in. Yeah, uh, you know, I have been, uh, my background is software, started out IBM, was in the software industry for about 15 years and my life changed when my son Matthew was eight years old. He climbed into my lap one Saturday morning, he goes, dad, do you still love me? I'm like, oh, stab me in the heart. And I'm like crying, I'm like, why would you ever say that son? He just said, oh, I never see you anymore. Uh, he broke my heart, changed my life. Um, and since our kids were eight and 10, they've had two full-time stay-at-home parents and are now 37 and 34 and they're amazing adults because we got to be at home with them. So while yeah. this might be a scary time transitioning from uh, an employer or employee uh, space to uh, a self-employed space, mm -hmm. uh, it can be a wonderful thing for your family. Um, there are naturally with any business, uh, any relationships, lots of ups and downs, no question about that, uh, working mm -hmm. for yourself. But I do agree with you 100%, Babs, that this is a perfect time for anybody to um, explore 
um, starting a, a small business or home business. So if you're interested in that, reach out to Babs. Her number, uh, I mean, her contact information is the bottom of the screen. Certainly reach out to me as well. Uh, I've been in the space for a long, long time. I absolutely love it. Um, I, I love being able to give people choices and options. And I think at the end of the day, that's what every person wants. So uh, I, I want to just encourage people to um, get into that quiet place maybe and reflect and figure out, you know, if this were to happen for another 18 months, two years, what would your life be like and what are your choices and what are your options and who would you want to align yourself with and what shifts and changes? Now, mm -hmm. if you're looking to start a, 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 a business uh, and you need legal support, which I would highly recommend that you look at all the advantages, not only from a tax standpoint, but uh, from a working environment standpoint, small yeah. business, home business, uh, I think it's an absolute beautiful thing. So reach out to myself, private message me, private message Babs. Babs, do you have any closing suggestions, comments, thoughts about this? Actually, just to pick up on something you said there, I mean, what I've been saying to people for quite a while is is having your own business isn't any riskier than being in full-time employment. People a lot of the time are scared to, to grab a bull by the horns and take the leap because they think it's not stable. And I think what we're seeing with what's happened with COVID-19 in the last few weeks is that being a small business owner is actually no less safe than, than being an employee. Employees are being laid off left, right and centre and you have no control over that. As a small business owner, there's always something you can do to grow and scale your business. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know sometimes I've been known to say I would rather work 80 hours a week so I don't have to work 40 hours a week <laughs> working for myself. <laughs> but, but you know what? I, I feel like I'm in control and that's why. And I, and I think safety comes uh, knowing that you can control something. And, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine whose granddaughter got married in Las Vegas uh, this past weekend. And, um, uh, and then I talked to another friend of mine and all the, uh, like the Bellagio, all the big hotels in Vegas are shutting down and laying everybody off. Yeah. And without having any sort of plan B, that's a scary thing. So uh, okay. I think certainly reaching out to you, certainly reaching out to me, we can give people maybe uh, some ideas on what they can do to protect their family and secure their, their finances. So Babs, thank you so much for uh, jumping on with us today. And uh, my friend watching, uh, thanks so much for showing up and, and being here with us today. And, and know that this is a time where um, you really do get an opportunity to reinvent yourself. Um, some hard choices will probably be ahead, but know that your best days are indeed in front of you and in front of me. And lastly, remember this, you have a choice. Make it a better than a terrific day and then a prosperous one because you, yes, you have so much to be grateful for right here, right now. Until next time, bye-bye for now. Thank you again, Babs. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.